Got dad's warrior out. Hasn't been idling or wanting to start. Been running kind of rough, I guess. When it does run, it doesn't want to idle. So I just took the seat off. Now I'm gonna pull the air box and the carb off and break it down. Uh, air box is pretty easy to take off. Just got a couple 10 millimeter, three, three 10 millimeter bolts. And then there's uh, a couple bolts up there that hold the back of the carb on. So I'm gonna pull those all off. Pull the air box off, pull the carb off, take it apart and clean it. Here's the uh, carb kit I got. It's a Tusk carb kit for the Yamaha Warrior. And uh, it's a Tusk carburetor kit, 16356900004. There's a bolt, so it's like three 10 millimeter bolts. The front of the carb has two 12 millimeter nuts with washers. Be sure not to drop the washers when you're removing the nuts. Once you have those two 12 millimeter nuts removed, you can start wiggling the carb loose so that you can twist it sideways and remove the two cables that hold the top of the carburetor on. With the carb loose, you can rotate it slightly sideways. You want to remove the side cover and the top plate, and from there you can disconnect the two throttle cables. There are three screws that remove the top plate. There are six screws that hold the side cover on. Once you have the side cover removed, you can go ahead and disconnect the little brass piece that holds the cable to the mechanism. Then you can unscrew the top part. There's just one drain line to pull free on the bottom of the carb and remove the carb. All right, so I got the three 10 millimeter bolts off that hold the air box on. And then there's five screws that hold the air box lid on. These are the two nuts, 12 millimeter nuts that hold the carb on. And there's two washers for those. Three screws that hold the top of the carb uh, throttle cable on. And then these are the six screws that hold the side the second throttle cable that goes to the accelerator pump. And here's the little tiny brass piece that holds the end of the cable for the accelerator pump on. Got the carb over here in a plastic tub. Um, I'm just going to scrub down the outside before I start cleaning the inside. Try and get some of this junk off. You can see it's pretty caked on there. Before I start disassembling the carb, I just want to clean the outside put the carb in a little bucket with some carb cleaner and a toothbrush and just scrub all of the dirt loose that's on the outside. You want to take the plastic cover off of the side and be careful when you're doing so a spring will shoot out. Um, you want to check your diaphragm here just make sure that there's no rips in the rubber uh, any holes and it will not work the way it is intended to. If you do happen to see any rips or tears in this little black piece right here, you're going to want to order a new one and replace it.
This white plastic piece on the side is what activates the accelerator pump when you pull the throttle lever. As you can see, the rod that pushes the plunger down is totally frozen. As I rotate this mechanism and the plastic piece pushes on the rod, the rod should be sliding down. But it appears that the carb is so dirty that that rod is not actually moving. Meaning this quad basically had no functioning accelerator pump mechanism in place. This could be part of why the Warrior was not running correctly when he was on the throttle. We'll need to make sure to free the stuck plunger, clean it, and reassemble it correctly. If you have an air compressor at this point, you can blow out the vent lines and the fuel intake line to make sure that there's no clogs. Um, if you'd like, you can also run a piece of fine wire down those to make sure that there's no clogs using the wire instead. The bottom of the carb is the bowl where the floats live. You're going to take the bowl off by removing the four screws that hold it on. Once you have the four screws removed, gently pull the bowl free. With the bowl free, you can see your air fuel mixture screw at the top. You can see your pilot jet. You can see your main jet. And you can see where the needle valve is connected to your floats. Next, I'm gonna be opening up our carb rebuild kit. The first thing I'm gonna be removing from the carb rebuild kit is our new needle valve and needle valve seat. Uh, this is a pretty common issue on these carbs. Uh, generally speaking, when gas is left in a carb for too long, it will either turn into a sticky jelly mess or a powdery kind of crispy sand. Either one is bad for your carburetor. It will plug up these jets and oftentimes it will make this float misbehave. It will either stick completely closed and not let enough gas in so that the bowl does not fill up or it will stick wide open and the bowl will overflow and then you'll have gas running out the bottom of the carburetor. I used a small metal punch to gently knock free the pin that supports the floats. A uh, little round rod here as I'm removing it, you can see it's a hinge that the floats sit on. Uh, once you've removed that, the floats should pull right out and the needle valve will pull out as well. With the old needle valve and float removed, you can remove the needle seat. Uh, this is the new needle seat. You can see it's also a 2.5, uh, just like the old one. And it comes with a new O-ring already installed. To install it, we're just gonna go ahead and press that back down in. Once the needle seat is installed, we can reinstall the float. This ring around the tip of the needle valve is a sign that it's worn down and needs to be replaced. You can see the new one doesn't have the ring around the rubber tip. Uh, we're just going to install the float valve on the float before we put the float back onto the carb. and then install the pin that the float hinges on back into the float itself, securing it to the carb. Once you have the float installed, you just want to basically check that there's nothing bound up and that it's free to move up and down. With the carb flipped upside down, you just want to measure and make sure that the float height is set to about half of an inch. Uh, the specification is actually 0.45 to 0.53 inches. Um, so you just want to make sure that that bottom of the float, when you hold it upside down, that it's resting on the needle valve. You're going to measure the distance between the mating surface and the top of the float. If the float height does not measure correctly, you just need to adjust the small metal tang on the float. You can bend it up or down until you find the right height. Next, I'll be replacing the main jet. It's pretty straightforward. You just unscrew the jet, and there's a washer that you want to remove with it. 
Uh, once you remove the main jet, you just want to make sure that it's clean inside if you're reusing it. Um, if you have the carb kit like I do, you're just going to be replacing it, screwing the new one in. Um, you're also going to be checking down inside of the body of the carb where the main jet sits. This is where the needle uh, also goes down inside. I uh, just want to make sure that there's no debris or anything clogged inside of there. Next I'll be removing the pilot jet. The pilot jet is down inside of this hole here. Using a small flathead screwdriver to remove it. You want to be extra careful not to strip the end. Here's a look at the old pilot jet next to the new one. You can see the old one is the same size as the new one. I'm not changing it since it was the stock size and I feel it should work correctly. If you are reusing your jet, again, you want to make sure to clean it out, hold it up so that you can make sure that you can see light through it, and if there's nothing blocking the jet hole. Reinstalling the pilot jet is pretty straightforward. Just drop it in there and then screw it in very carefully. There's no washer like there is with the main jet. Next, I'm removing the air fuel mix screw. Sometimes this is called the pilot screw. Uh, this is just a screw that is used for fine-tuning uh, your air fuel mix uh, or your pilot. Uh, here it is, I've rebuilt it with the new uh, spring and the new washer and the new rubber o-ring on the end. Uh, you want to make sure that you get all of the old screw out. There's going to be a rubber o-ring that likes to stick inside, so before you go to reinstall it like I'm doing here, you want to make sure you get that rubber o-ring out, uh, sometimes a nice ice pick or something like that, maybe a paper clip you can use to get it out. So here I am screwing the new air fuel slash pilot fuel screw. I want to screw it all the way in and then the default spec uh, in the manual calls for two full rotations back out counterclockwise. So there's a half a turn, one turn, There's another turn and another half a turn. Next thing, I'm going to be removing the drain screw. Uh, that's this Phillips flathead screw on the side here. Uh, you just want to remove the screw and basically clean it all out. And make sure that you can still unscrew this when you need to to let the raw fuel out. If you're going to be storing the quad for a while, this is nice to have. You also want to clean this jet here. I believe this is called the leak jet that feeds down to your accelerator pump. Uh, you just want to use a fine piece of wire and clean it out. My carb kit did not include one of these jets, so I took care to clean it with a fine piece of wire, make sure that I could see through it before reinstalling it. Next I was working on the stuck accelerator pump plunger. Uh, this had so much sticky and crusty sand inside that it would basically not move anymore. It was completely frozen and I had to use pliers to remove it. Uh, so what I did for this was I took it and sanded it down with some fine, fine grit sandpaper um, and a little bit of steel wool. Uh, just spun it gently in the sandpaper and the steel wool to get the outer edge of. Once I had that cleaned up, I took it and reinstalled it with the spring and made sure that it was not catching and that the plunger would now move up and down freely. The kit includes a new o-ring gasket for the fuel bowl. Uh, you just want to make sure that you press the o-ring in all the way around so you don't pinch it. I used a flathead screwdriver to kind of help squish the new o-ring down into the seat where it belongs. Uh, there's also an o-ring that belongs on the intake side. Um, paper clip or a pick, sometimes a flathead screwdriver is helpful for removing this. And then you just want to squeeze the new one in there again. Uh, making sure not to pinch it when you reinstall the new one. Before I reinstall the fuel bowl, I just want to double check one last time that the accelerator pump plunger is moving freely and that it's coming back up freely with just the force of the spring. You want to check that your 
pilot and your main jet are both tight and if you haven't adjusted your air fuel pilot screw you want to go ahead and do so now you want to make sure it's at least two full rotations out one thing I did not get video footage of but is important to do is to inspect your jet needle this is a long needle that goes on the slide uh, the jet kit does include one I inspected mine it was nice and straight it was not worn so I did not replace it you're ready to install the fuel bowl jiggle the fuel bowl back on then you'll reinstall the four screws that go on the bottom with the fuel bowl back on I can test the throttle mechanism and make sure that the plastic white piece is now pushing the accelerator pump plunger down and that the spring is pushing it back up and it's returning to the position it should be in when my hand is off of the throttle one thing to check before you install the carb back in the four-wheeler is the choke assembly. Uh, you basically just unscrew the black handle on the side of the carb. Uh, there is an o-ring there that can wear out. I did check that on mine and it seemed fine. I didn't include it in this video but it's definitely something that you do want to check if your carb doesn't seem like the choke is working correctly. The carb rebuild kit includes a new rubber gasket for the top of the carb. This you'll be sure to include when you are screwing the cap back on when you're installing throttle cables. To reinstall the carb on the quad, I'm just going to take the first throttle cable and insert the brass piece on the end and then that brass piece goes into the throttle mechanism on the side of the carb. You're just gonna slip the small side into the side of the carburetor mechanism and then rotate the cable into place. From there you can screw the throttle cable into the throttle cable housing and then screw the side cover back onto the carb. Reinstall the slide in the carburetor and then secure the top plate with the three Phillips screws. Next you want to position the carb with the two studs on the back in place and then you'll install the washer and nut on each side with the 12 millimeter wrench. Next you can install your fuel line. Uh, this is a good time before you install your fuel line just to make sure that you're getting good flow from the gas tank. There is a small filter inside of the gas tank petcock. Um, I suggest running some fuel directly into a bucket or something like that, and just making sure that you're getting good flow. If you're not getting good flow, this would be a good time to rebuild the petcock on your fuel tank or check your fuel tank for debris. Maybe just completely dump everything out of your fuel tank and flush it out. Be sure to also check that your fuel cap is venting correctly. They can oftentimes become clogged or if the hose becomes kinked. Next you want to install your air box and your air intake hose. Just make sure that you get your clamps on there good and tight so that you don't have any air leaks that would let dirt in. I know I'm installing a dirty air filter in this video, but I did, I promise you guys, I did get a new air filter for this quad shortly after I recorded this video. Make sure you screw down all five of the screws that hold your air box lid on if you're still using one. I completely drained the tank and then I filled it up with fresh fuel. The last thing I did, which isn't related to the fuel system, is replace the spark plug. A lot of times, if the quad has been out of tune for a while, it's been running rough, the spark plug will be fouled or covered in fuel. Uh, so it's just a good idea to start with a fresh plug, that way you can rule out that the spark plug is causing the issue when you're trying to tune the freshly cleaned carb. You just want to make sure to check the gap on your new plug. In this case, it's right where it needs to be. 